Senator, on the issue of gender, you've gotten some blowback from some of your fellow Democrats, as you well know, for being the first senator to call on Senator Al Franken, one of your colleagues then in the Senate, to resign. And what Democrats say now is that there was a rush to judgment, that there was no due process, there was no ethics committee, there was no distinction between really horrific crimes like Harvey Weinstein and sexual assault and allegations of, not to say acceptable, but less horrific things like alleged unwanted groping or touching. Uh, I, I guess the question is, do you still believe that Senator Franken needed to resign from the Senate? Let's be clear. Uh, Senator Franken was accused credibly by eight women of groping and forcible kissing. Two of those allegations, all were, were corroborated um, in real time. Uh, two of them were since he was a senator. And the last one that came to light was a congressional staffer. Now, I'm a mother of boys, and I was talking to my oldest son, Theo, at home. And he said, Mom, why are you so tough on Al Franken? And I said, Theo, it's not okay to grope a woman anywhere on her body without her consent. It's not okay to forcibly kiss a woman ever without her consent. It's not okay for Senator Franken, and it's not okay for you. Now, I needed to have clarity on that, and I was not going to remain silent. I couldn't defend it, and I wasn't going to defend it. That was my decision. Senator Franken's decision is whether or not he wanted to resign, whether or not he wanted to wait to his next election. But if a few Democratic donors are angry, because I stood by eight women, including a young woman who works in Congress, that's on them. You have also taken heat because at one point during this whole controversy, you said that you believed, looking back, that Bill Clinton should have resigned for his actions during the Monica Lewinsky scandal. And as you know, some people on the Clinton team said, gee, you were very comfortable with Bill Clinton when you took Hillary Clinton's position in the Senate and had the support of the Clintons. And this, in effect, they accuse you of being an opportunist. Yeah. Well, um, I was pretty clear on that issue. But all of these questions that we're talking about today, Chris, are really going to this issue of do we value women? Because it's not about any one person. It's not about any one industry. It's about all of us. And what the Me Too movement has been about is creating space for men and women to come forward, to tell their truth, and to have maybe some possibility at justice. And so I've been working my entire 12 years in public life to value women, to allow their voices to come to the fore politically, but also in society and in the economy. So I've led the, issue, I've led the movement on making sure we end sexual violence in the military. I've led the movement on trying to end sexual assault on college campuses. I have led the issue to change how we deal with sexual harassment in Congress itself, and was part of a group that passed a bill on a bipartisan basis unanimously this year. And so I have led on these issues because I think this country needs to value women. It's why I also lead on equal pay for equal work and a national paid leave plan so we can value them in the economy, so they can earn at their fullest potential. But that's what all of these issues are. And we have to begin to recognize that when we hold women back, when we don't value them, it holds back the whole country.